So let's talk about your movie. You know, what I especially love about this film is the fact that it kind of remembers us what it feels like to be a child, because unfortunately, a lot of people forget about that once they become adults. So I was wondering, how did you make sure in your life you never forget about that feeling? And what would you say, how important it even is, you know, to keep that part, you know, that inner child alive in a way? I, uh, I mean, I was a kid like everyone and grew up, uh, but uh, I... I... Once I grew up, I wasn't that interested in childhood. I kind of was, uh, I wanted to be older than I was. <laughs> I <wouldn't. laughs> oh, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was uh, when I got kids of my own, I really started to be interested in that part of uh, of life again. And uh, it was interesting because I could see my son doing something and it would just trigger a memory in my own life. And suddenly I felt... Uh, just a moment I could feel what it was like to be a kid again when, while I was re-experiencing that memory and then it would disappear because you can't hold on to that because mm -hmm. being an adult is so radically different than being a kid uh, oh, the, yeah. just the way you experience time the way everything's open the way you feel stuff so intensely the way you your imagination is part of reality all, all that you know you you can't really uh, you can't really feel like that as an adult. Of course, me as a as a writer, I keep alive maybe more of the imagination part. Uh, yeah, it's still it's still very very different than being uh, a kid. So so that's what fascinated me while I was working on this movie was like, how can I get into that space? How can I get into that uh, feeling of being a kid or that secret world of kids? You know, because they're very secretive. They have all those uh, thoughts and feelings and spaces and stuff going on with their friends that me, as a parent, I can't, I have no way of knowing. Right. But what would you say, what, what do you especially remember from your childhood that kind of helped you to define this very, very organic and natural bond and friendship that, that the kids have in the movie? The, the way they have this rapport, I guess it just helps watching my kids with their friends and just the way they speak yeah. and when they that helped a lot uh but uh, also being remem remembering how you as a kid you don't really see everything with your eyes your, your hands are active all the time you're touching yeah. stuff you know you're, you're you're just uh you're you're experiencing stuff with all your senses and and i felt yeah. with the cinematography that we need to recreate that you know because uh i mean cinema is just sound and images but we need to have those other senses going uh, and uh, for instance how those close-up of someone just uh, picking at the scab and eating the thing you know that almost everyone has done that as a child but you, <laughs> yes and when you see it in, in close-up you 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 might remember that feeling of, of mm -hmm. how the nail touches it and how it felt in your mouth and and suddenly you have a physical memory of being a kid that's part of the movie. And then you're immersed in a movie in a completely different way. And usually when you film stuff in just those, those normal kind of uh, framings, you wouldn't feel that. So we wanted to, yeah, we need to go in the extreme close up and also the very wide, you know, have that kind of uh, differences. So you got into the feeling of being a kid and also the spaces around them and the parents who just walk by and don't notice that there's a life or death struggle going on here. <laughs> exactly, yes. And it really is about, you know, self-discovery. Uh, and, and of course, we all discover a lot of things about ourselves when we are growing up. So I was wondering, what would you say has been like the biggest discovery you've made as a kid about yourself as a person or about you as a future artist and storyteller? First question, maybe it's easier to answer. So I, I remember working on this movie like uh, a moment where I was playing, I had this like air gun with lead bullets mm -hmm. that I was allowed to play with for some reason. And uh, <laughs> and I shot at a bird, a seagull, and I hit it. And I could see it just moving slightly because it's a big bird. It doesn't like drop from mm -hmm. like one shot of a air gun. But I had picked up on, I was a kid, but I picked up on that lead is poisonous so i remember lying awake at night that night and thinking oh that bird is slowly dying now 
it's in agony somewhere because of me. And, yes. uh, and that was, I think, an important moment for me because that made me aware of my own limits. And it made me think maybe because of that, I now know deep inside of me that it's wrong to be cruel to animals. And it's not just mm -hmm. something that my mom said is wrong. It's something I feel is wrong. Because right. I, I feel the reason maybe why you experiment like that when we're kids and do like the small acts of animal cruelty, if it's just stepping on a rainworm or, or destroying an anthill, you know, it's, it's to find your own limits and you find your own inner sense of morals. So, so I, I remember thinking about that moment and I think that's one of the reasons why that's part of the story is about, you know, how you as a kid need to find your own sense of right and wrong. Absolutely. And I mean, in, in, in Ben's arc, we get to see what also happens if he does stuff like that on a bigger scale. And as you just said, of course, kids do stuff like that when because, of course, they don't know that much about life and death. And this is like, like you know, for many of them, it's like the first introduction to those kind of topics. Um, and I feel like, but you know, that some directors that 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 would like to introduce stuff like that in their movies often don't get the opportunity because they are told by their producers don't do stuff like that or whatever. But it felt very, very organic to me to see that in the film. So I was wondering how challenging and tricky was it for you, you know, to get those uh, that side, you know, approved and to find the right arguments, you know, that made them say, okay, you know, let's go ahead like that. Well, well, there's some scenes in the movie that people, even on script stage, was like, are, are you really going to do that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and then I said, yes, of course. And th that was the limit of the, you know, the because the people who I was working with had that kind of respect for the script and for me as a filmmaker and I had this great uh, collaboration with my producer. So it wasn't like someone's going to put the foot down and say, you needed to be more commercial or people won't, don't want to see this. Uh, so it's, uh, and, and, I, and honestly, I, I didn't think those things were that radical because I watch a lot of horror movies and yes, really, really bad things happen in those films, you know? Uh, oh yeah. So, so, so I was kind of surprised, you know, when we first showed it in Cannes, there was one scene, like 20 minutes, you, you know the one I'm talking about, uh, you know, with uh, uh, some sort of animal cruelty. And some people just walked out immediately when they understood oh, really? where the scene was going. Um, I mean, oh, it, wow. was, it was a movie theater over a thousand seats. So like uh, five people walking out is not a catastrophe. But then we showed it in Norwegian Film Festival in Norway. And a woman, she, after an hour or so, with the scene with Ben and his mother, mm -hmm. she left the theater, we couldn't take it anymore. She fainted and hit her head on something and started bleeding and had to be taken to an ambulance. And, and, no. I'm, and, I'm, and I'm going like, people are so sensitive. I, I have no idea. I, I, I don't feel my movies up there with like the most violent horror movies at all. I, I, I was very conscious yeah. of, of the violence being very, you know, uh, very tactile, you know? I, I get more a kick out of watching someone slam their finger in a car door because you know, uh, when I see that in a movie, my whole body reacts. But, but, but when I see someone's head being shot and the head explodes, I don't feel nothing. I can laugh, it's, it's splatter, it's fun. But it yes. does have nothing to do with my emotions. So I kept the violence kind of on the lower level. But then people react like that uh, and I just feel, Wow, why do they do that? You know, uh, and not everyone. Someone just feels, oh, it's this exciting story. I enjoyed it. It's uh, it's fun. But some people have that really, like, uh, just can't handle it. Yeah, just can't handle it. And, and that maybe is the mixture of like getting people involved, thinking about their childhood, thinking about their kids, and them doing that maybe that they're not used to. Or I, I have no idea. That that's why I'm saying I, I'm. I'm like curious when I meet different audiences because people react so differently. I mean, in horror festival, people have no really? problem with these things, you know? But, oh, you, yeah, show exactly. it, but you show it in Cannes or like the opening movie of the Norwegian Film Festival, you have people who have- Different audience. Yeah, different kind of audiences. So it's a movie that becomes very different with, uh, with different audiences, which is, uh, 
uh, and most people like it, you know, not people enjoy them. Even the woman who I fainted after working out, she was, she, I talked to her afterwards when she had like a eight stitches and a and bandaged eye. And she said she was sorry she couldn't stay for the ending, you know, <laughs> because she was curious how it ended. <laughs> so it's, uh, so people react to it uh, in very different ways.